Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at an overview of VLANs. We'll be discussing VLAN definitions, benefits of VLAN design, and then finally, we're going to look at the types of VLANs. This episode is part of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. A VLAN is a virtual LAN, a virtual local area network. Up until now, we've talked about local area networks where all devices connected into a switch belong to that LAN. It all shares the same network address. What we're going to do now is instead of having each switch be a different LAN itself, we're going to create these virtual LANs. These virtual LANs can span multiple switches, multiple floors or locations in there. VLANs allow us to have segmentation on our network. What we can do is make our network into smaller, more manageable pieces. They allow us to organize our network in a way that makes sense for us. Multiple different ways we could start looking at or organizing our networks. We could or organize it by department, IT, accounting, shop floors, HR. They could all have their own LAN, their own network. We would set up a VLAN for each one. We could do it by location. First floor has a VLAN, second floor has a VLAN, third floor. Or, or the Chicago office has one VLAN, the New York office has another VLAN, the West Coast office has a third VLAN. However you want to group your devices together, however it makes sense for you and your company, that's the correct way to do that. With our VLANs, broadcast, multicast, and unicast, they're isolated to that individual LAN, that individual VLAN. They will not cross. Just like a LAN will propagate broadcast up until the router, a VLAN will do the same thing. Any device in that VLAN, no matter how many different switches they're connected to, as long as they're in the same VLAN and they're configured correctly, those are going to hear the broadcast and none of the other devices will. Each virtual LAN is going to have its own unique range of IP addresses. Here in our example, we can see that we're using a slash 24. So the first three octets here is our network address. The VLAN 2, the IT network, has 10.0.2. Pay attention to the third octet. The HR network has a network address of 10.0.3. Once again, that network address is different than the IT network, so those are separate networks. Those devices won't be able to communicate. Sales network, once again, has a 10.0.4. That third octet is different in the network address. And so we have three different networks there. Even if you would put them all in the same network, they wouldn't talk to each other because that network portion is different. What we can do here is we can isolate those devices using virtual LANs. Even though we have three different switches, the graphic here has a switch on first floor, second floor, and third floor, we can create a virtual LAN that spans these three switches and on each floor we can create VLAN 2, VLAN 3, VLAN 4. The IT, the HR, and the sales VLAN. And we can put computers on each one of those floors and they will belong to the same network so they can communicate with each other. They'll have their own security however you set that up. But they'll span all three floors and they'll be able to be on that same network. And same thing with the VLAN 3, the HR network, and VLAN 4, the sales network. That gives us a smaller broadcast domain. If we didn't have these VLANs here, all these devices would be all in the same broadcast domain. They'd, they'd be passing traffic between each other, causing a lot of congestion. These VLANs allow us to break our network into smaller networks. Where this is sort of like subnetting a subnet. We are virtual LANing our LANs. We're, we're creating smaller networks typically. As we talk about switches, we need to talk about the types of ports on those switches. Here we have a picture of a switch. What we're talking about are these ports on the front of our device. Typically it's the main group of ports. Sometimes it's the uplink ports on the small on the side here, but normally it's the main group of ports we have here. These can be one of two types of ports. It can either be an access port or a trunk port. What an access port is, that connects to 
typically end devices. We connect that to an end device, a computer, a printer, a voice over IP phone. That handles just that traffic for one VLAN's worth of information. That port isn't tagged. And what we mean by tagged is when it comes into the switch, when it comes into the router, we put a special tag in there to identify which VLAN it belongs to, which virtual LAN it belongs to. Once it goes out that access port, that tag is stripped off because there's only one device on that access port. That device gets that traffic because the switch identified it belonging to that VLAN. Trunks, on the other hand, they can accept multiple VLANs worth of information. Typically, we have trunks between switches. You have multiple VLANs on switch one, multiple VLANs on switch two. You need to get that information between switch one and two. We create a trunk port, and it handles all VLAN information. It passes it back and forth across there. That port does VLAN tagging. It identifies when you send that piece of information across, it tags it and says, hey, that belongs to VLAN 10, the HR VLAN. It belongs to VLAN 20, the manufacturing VLAN. It identifies it. We, we encapsulate it. We add some more information there. We also have something called the native VLAN. This typically goes for legacy equipment, older equipment that doesn't do tagging. And we can say that if it's not tagged, put that traffic in the native VLAN. Also, across the trunk port, you can say what VLANs are allowed to go across there. Maybe you don't want VLAN 10, the HR, going out to switch to because there's no HR people out there. You can block that. And actually, I shouldn't say block. You can allow all the other VLANs worth of information to go across there and not allow the HR VLAN to go across. So we have two types of ports for our switches. One is an access, which allows one VLAN, connects to end devices. The other type of port is a trunk port, allows all VLANs worth of information across there. And typically, you, you connect it to other intermediary devices, connected to a switch, connected to a router. If you like this episode, on an overview of VLANs and you get value out of it and depending upon the platform you're using please click that like button give a five star rating leave a comment doing this supports the channel which in turn helps me bring you more great content subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell you can also visit my website at captechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form as we look at designing VLANs on your network, there are some benefits what we, what we get here. We have smaller broadcast domain. Look at the graphic here. We have six PCs spread out over, across our network. We have three different VLANs. And what happens here is we have VLAN 10 on PC1. We have VLAN 10 on PC4 here. So PC1, PC4 is VLAN 10. When we send out a broadcast, from PC1, what happens is all other PCs in VLAN 10 hear it. If you're in a different VLAN, you don't hear it. So we have smaller broadcasts using less bandwidth on there. We have improved security. Only users in the same VLAN are able to communicate together. PC1 is only able to communicate with PC4. PC1 can get to the PC2, 3, 5, or 6 without having to go through a router. And then typically on routers where you have some sort of security. We have improved IT efficiency. These VLANs, what we can do is we can group devices together with similar requirements. And here in the example, we have faculty. Faculty have one set of requirements. Students have another set of requirements. And then even our guest network has another set of requirements and so you can group all those devices based upon based upon security requirements reduce costs it allows us to use one switch for multiple vlans if we didn't have vlans each lan would have to have its own switch over here on the left side of our network we have three vlans because we have vlans we can use one switch and we see that right here but if we didn't have VLANs, we would have to have three switches there. That would be three times the cost for us. We get better performance. Smaller broadcast domains give us less traffic, less congestion. That improves our bandwidth. And also, 
like we said, simpler management. Smaller groups need similar applications and network access allows you to do your job more efficiently. When you first turn on a device and you have no configuration on there, it sets up a couple VLANs for you. The switch goes ahead, goes ahead and sets up a couple VLANs. It's the default VLAN, the default data VLAN, the default management VLAN. The default VLAN is that first VLAN and it gets VLAN number one. All the ports are put into that VLAN. They have to put it in some VLAN. The operating system, the Cisco IOS, puts all the ports, all available ports into that default VLAN. The default native VLAN, the native VLAN once again is for any any information that comes in from a device that is not capable of tagging, putting that VLAN ID in the header. Typically this is older, typically this is legacy equipment on your network that does not support 802.1Q, that's the trunking protocol and tagging protocol. It does not support that. When that traffic comes in, we have to know where to put it and so we put it in the native VLAN. By default, the default VLAN is VLAN 1. Also, the default management VLAN is VLAN 1. We have to start somewhere, we do that. Now, the default VLAN, it cannot be deleted, it cannot be renamed. It will always be called default, it will always be number one, and you just can't get rid of it. Now, the recommendation here is to not use VLAN 1 as your default VLAN. Change your default native VLAN to something else, that's just good security practice, also, put your management in a different VLAN. You have your default VLAN. You'll have your native VLAN. Put your management in a third VLAN. That segments that off. And what we mean by management is like your SVIs, your switch virtual interfaces that allow you to SSH into a switch and configure it. Put those into a separate one. An example here is the native VLAN. You could set that as 99. The default management, I don't know, VLAN 75. And those are in different VLANs. Because they're in different VLANs, they don't communicate back and forth. You can set up special security for each VLAN according to the needs and the requirements there. There are a couple more types of VLANs here. The first one is the data VLAN. This is dedicated to user-generated traffic. This is where you have your PC and when you browse your web, that go, typically should go through the data VLAN. When you check your email, it goes through the data VLAN. When you connect into your enterprise resource planning package for your company, should go through the data VLAN. This is all the user generated one. Once again, by default, this is VLAN one, and it's just when it's when the device starts up, it has to know where to put all of these interfaces. So we put it in in the default VLAN VLAN one. Once again, recommendation is go ahead and change this. I typically go ahead and create a separate VLAN, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, call it the data VLAN, and put all my ports in there that have end devices, user-generated traffic into that VLAN. The native VLAN, once again, is used only on trunk links, and this is when a frame comes in and is not tagged. In our, in our native VLAN, all the frames going across the trunk port, they are tagged with the 802.1Q protocol. And so any information going across there, it, there's a little piece of information put in the header that identifies which VLAN it belongs to because that, that trunk handles all information going across there. If it's not, if it's not tagged, what happens is it goes into the native VLAN so that way we can identify it and track it through the system. And so this is for our untagged traffic for our native VLAN. And we have our management VLAN. This is where you will go in and typically configure your intermediary devices, configure your routers, configure your switches. This is used for Telnet and SSH. And as a security note, once again, don't use Telnet. It sends your information in clear text. Always use SSH. Your virtual terminal emulators, your VTY lines, PuTTY, Terraterm, they're going to use this management VLAN. Typically, this VLAN 
is the one that we use for our switch virtual interfaces on our layer two switches. Another type of VLAN we create is the voice VLAN. We give voice its own VLAN because it has special requirements. The voice VLAN needs to have assured bandwidth. You need to guarantee a bandwidth because that's a real-time conversation. We want to make sure a real-time conversation has enough bandwidth to travel across your network and make sense to that end device. We need to give it a high level of quality of service. Once again, quality of service basically is the priority in which that, that gets queued. We want to make sure that our voice traffic gets processed before anything else on our network. And so we give that VLAN a high level of quality of service. We want it to have the ability to avoid congestion. You can get into special configurations on your network where if there is congestion, you can route that voice traffic around that congestion on your network, hopefully giving you better improvements. Your overall goal is to have a less than 150 millisecond delay from source to destination in your voice VLAN. And so you're gonna optimize, you're gonna give priority to that VLAN. As you go and think about voice and having a voice VLAN, you need to think about this in a holistic approach. Your entire network needs to be designed for voice. Most devices, Cisco devices especially, if you don't have a voice network, you can go through and you can build that in as you work through. You just gotta make sure you have a good plan understand what you're doing, but you can go ahead and then start building that into your network. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on an overview of VLANs. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my social and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. You can get all of these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. In the bottom right is one of my favorite episodes that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on switching, routing, and wireless essentials. Once again, I'm Kevin. This here is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.